Welcome to this session. My name is Ursula Hofer. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Lancet Infectious Diseases. And um, today we'll talk about best practices for writing your research paper. So the general structure of a paper is pretty similar for all journals. This is a, how we do it, title, abstract, keyword sections, and so on. And we'll go through um, these different sections in the presentation. I'll give you some tips how to um, write um, your research paper so that it's in the best possible shape. So one, one uh, way to think about the paper is to think about uh, telling a story. So you've got a title, little intro, abstract, some keywords, and then the sections are where the story happens. So the introduction should tell you why did you do this research, what was the questions, and then the methods tell you how did you do the research, what uh, kind of study did you do, what did you measure, then the results, obviously, what did you find? So there you go into a bit more details, and we'll talk about the uh, guidelines for how to report this. And then the discussion uh, should tell you, so what? What is the point of your study? What's the point of the findings? How does it fit into what's been done before? What does it mean for the field, for clinical practice? And then uh, you also should discuss limitations here. So no study is perfect, and you should mention this up front. And then there are some additional um, sections where you mention author contributions, who did what, declarations of interest, very important, so that you're transparent. Um, data sharing, so where can um, people who are interested to use reuse your data, how can they find, find that? Do you have any uh, sequences deposited somewhere? Acknowledgements, has someone helped you? Um, funders, so on references where can people find the literature and then supplementary data. The first pe thing people obviously see is the title, so this is very important. So you should spend some time to make this um, as explanatory as possible. And the title of your study should be non-declamatory. So what does this mean? You shouldn't interpret what you found. You should uh, keep this descriptive. So what kind of study did you do? Did you do a randomized controlled trial? Was in the cohort study? So you should put this in the title. You should avoid uh, using abbreviations because these can be field uh, specific. So an abbreviation abbreviation can mean something different in another field and it might um, also not be findable if people don't use that abbreviation if they search for your study. You should also include details like uh, was it a phase one, phase two, phase three study, was it double blind, open label. Then the abstract, um, abstract uh, is the first thing people read so you should spend some time um, on this part and what we usually recommend is to write the paper first and then go back and write the abstract because um, then you've got the structure of the paper already and the abstract somehow follows a similar structure. Most medical journals have structured abstract abstracts. This means there are subheadings. So you've got a background where you uh, describe what was the aim of your study. So you shouldn't go into too much detail about the general field, but your specific study, what was the aim you wanted to test, uh, whether drug X can protect from mortality in disease Y. Then you uh, describe the methods, what did you do, and the findings. In the findings, you uh, should describe the primary outcome or uh, the, the key findings that you had, and you should include uh, some measure of uncertainty, so uh, confidence intervals, uh, depending on what kind of statistics you did. And uh, you should also mention the funding you had. And um, you should make sure every section reflects what the paper and your data actually shows. And uh, if possible, don't use abbrevi abbreviation similar to the title. Also, don't... Uh, try to oversell your data, so stick what you've actually found. So um, quite often you see things like, uh, oh, this might cure cancer. And if, if you, uh, well, often this is not true, so try to say what you found in your specific uh, study. 
the introduction should give the reader an idea where the field stands. And what problem are you addressing in your specific study? So what was the question? What did you do? What was the aim? Why did you do your study? And uh, you should describe the literature accurately. So um, if there are conflicting results, you should mention this. If someone else has done something similar, then mention this too. So uh, don't just leave it out because you think it's going to be more novel. So it's better to be up front here and then describe um, how does your study complement the, the, what's been found so far. The methods are a very important part of the paper. Uh, overall, the goal is to make sure that there's enough detail that uh, readers can understand what was done, how did you come to your results, and if someone were to repeat the study, they could do this. So um, we do have word limits, but uh, since the methods can be quite detailed, uh, please do keep this in. In particular, for peer review, it's important that uh, the peer reviewers can assess the paper. And if you find later on uh, just doesn't fit, there's some parts that can go in the appendix. We can discuss this with you, but rather put enough detail here to begin with. And then you should say what type of study did you do? Did you do a randomized control trial? Did you do an observational study? And are you following any kind of guidelines? We go into types of guidelines later for reporting. Um, what population did you look at? Who were your participants? And some details about them, demographics, so on. Did you have ethical approval? Who gave you the approval? And uh, did you uh, search patient consent? How was this done? And what interventions did you do? So provide details here. And uh, what did you measure then? Methods of observation? Did you do surveys, lab? test, so on. What were the outcomes? So what was your primary outcome, your secondary outcome? How did you define that? How did you measure it? Then some um, information about the statistics. So did you do a power calculation? What kind of tests did you do? Um, if it was descriptive, that's fine. Then say we only did uh, descriptive statistics since it was a phase one small study and we didn't have power to look at any differences yet. And very important, if you had any deviations from the protocol, um, then list those and give some reason explanation why you had to change things. And then last, the uh, role of the funder. So did the funder somehow influence the study? Was the funder uh, involved in the study itself? Next section is the results. Um, Depending on what type of study you did, there are different uh, reporting guidelines. You can go on the Equator Net um, website, Equator Network, where you can uh, look up uh, which um, reporting guideline um, applies to your specific study. So consort for trials, Prisma for uh, systematic reviews, and so on. And um, you should follow the reporting guidelines there. For example, for trials, um, describe the patient demographics, then the primary outcome, and so on. In the results, uh, be clear and try to make it easy to understand. So you don't need to list everything you did. You also have figures and tables um, where some of the details can go in. And then in the results, you can highlight um, the main findings that you have in your display items. Yeah. Every display item you have should be described in the results and on the other side um, if you do have a table or a figure it should also link to the results you can, uh, if you have too much uh, things and some additional results that can go in the appendix that's fine too and then uh, each part of the results must have a method so that people can understand how did you come to the uh, results and then if you mention something in the methods obviously you should show it in the results if uh, for some reason it wasn't part of that study then you can say this was an outcome we wanted to look at and we're going to assess it later it will pu be published elsewhere but it needs to be clear 
and in the results try to uh, stick to data and what you found so don't interpret or speculate about why you found what you found uh, this is uh, all things that should, should go in the discussion when uh, writing the results section um, it's important that you report the primary endpoint clearly um, and whether your aim has been met for uh, the data give uh, an indication of precision so mediums confidence intervals so on depending on what kind of statistics you did then uh, follow uh, the reporting as you had it specified in the protocol um, give actual numbers of patients then rather percentages so ideally you should report both because percentages uh, can mean something very different let's say you had 300 patients or you had three patients so um, it's good to have, report both and if you do any post hoc analysis you can include those but uh, clearly label those as post hoc Then a couple of things you shouldn't do when writing your results section. Don't reiterate all the uh, data you have in tables and figures. Summarize the most important things you found. Don't use subjective terms. So uh, saying uh, this is a dramatic increase of function or things like this, just report the data. And if you use significant, then try to only use it for um, to describe your statistical uh, results. So statistically significant or not. And um, if you have uh, post hoc outcomes, um, those should be clearly labeled as post hoc and as an additional outcome. So it's important, even if those are interesting, that we, you report the primary outcome and focus on the primary outcome and what you found there. Moving on to the discussion, um, here you can uh, get a bit broader than just describing the results. You already did that in the results section, so you don't uh, need to repeat all of this. You can say the main finding of the study was X, Y, Z. And what does this actually mean? So what does it mean for the field, for the patients, for future research? And to make the discussion correspond to the results, so um, you can't come up with something that you haven't shown in the results. So you shouldn't uh, mention any kind of results uh, the first time in discussion, not show them before. You can compare your results with uh, what's been done previously. Did you find the same? Did you find something else? You should also discuss limitations. No study is perfect. There's always something that comes up, something unplanned. And uh, please do mention this here. And then explain the next step. What does it mean for clinical practice? Uh, is there any future research plans? Are there any other ongoing trials uh, related to your work? You can uh, um, speculate a bit in the discussion, try to explain things, uh, come up with theory. If you do that, then it has to be clear that it is speculative. Um, so say, we hypothesize, we think potentially, and um, try to still link it to your data. So don't just uh, come up uh, with, with uh, something that's too far fetched from what you actually saw. Then a couple of uh, general tips. Try to tell your story, so your research paper, as simply and as concisely as possible. This makes it easier for um, readers to understand what you did and to um, understand the importance of what you actually found. If you do use any kind of abbreviations or um, field specific words, then uh, define them and explain them on first mention. And what's always helpful, if you've got a first draft of your paper, you can show it to a colleague, ideally from a um, different field than your own, and ask them, um, is it clear, do you understand this? And they might give you hints where you need to work a bit more on the description. And then try to avoid using complicated language when simple language would do as well. So instead of uh, saying utilize, just say use. Instead of employ, also say use. Interrogate, you can say screen or test. Um, 
something else uh, is uh, instead of using passive language, uh, the test was done, said we tested patients for XYZ. One thing uh, about the writing style, um, you can use AI tools such as ChatGPT, something else if you want to, to polish your language, but uh, the text is still your responsibility. You have to check afterwards that the meaning isn't changed. It's still what you wanted to say. Everything is accurate. No mistakes were introduced. And if you do use AI tools, please declare this at the end of the paper. Have a little section to say, we used an AI tool and uh, what did you do exactly? So we used it to, to check the English or check the grammar, improve the language, and we take responsibility for the content. One last point, uh, if you do a trial, then you need to register it and you need to register it before you start your actual trials. There are a couple of registry, uh, registries around the biggest one, clinicaltrials.gov, so you can either register there or there are some other ones in other countries, uh, China, European ones, so on. This is important um, to keep your research transparent. It uh, encourages reporting of all trial results because uh, every no one knows which trials are going on, um, when were they done, dates and so on. And you can even uh, uh, put some of the results in the registries, depending on which one. And um, patients can look this up too. Doctors can look up what was exactly done, what was the primary outcome. Okay, I hope this uh, session was helpful for you. And once you've written your paper uh, and uh, want to submit to us, you go to the Lancet.com submit and you find all our journals there. And um, the guidelines for authors there too. So if you want to look up some kind of details, formatting requirements, declarations, uh, reporting, things like this, you find that too on our website. Thank you so much for your attention.